Dan Marver, Paul Shivari, Devin Tingle, all are amazing friends who listen to us here on the Sports Cubicle and even on Sports from the Couch. You know I couldn't go without introducing some audio from LeVar Ball. We have waited so long. Lonzo Ball joined the Chicago Bulls, and we were just hungry for anything that we could get our hands on. And, and quite frankly, it was quiet in the Western Front, but not anymore. Marvelous one, Dan Marver, joining me, Mike Mercado, today as we are going to talk about this interesting conversation that LeVar Ball the father of the Ball Brothers in the NBA, had with David Kaplan on Kaplan's YouTube channel and podcast. So credit to them for this audio. Marvelous one, I want you to hear this audio, and we're going to dissect it to see exactly what the uh, the ball, the head of the Big Baller Brad had to say about Zach Levine's future with the Chicago Bulls. He's gone, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, it started off, Zach Levine, Zach Levine, Zach Levine. Okay, now you get hurt, a few things happen, and guess who's doing all the big plays? All I hear is DeMar. Right. DeMar, DeMar, DeMar. He don't want to play second fiddle, and who don't want to go to L.A.? He won't go back to the West Coast. He'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm from, I think he's from the West Coast. Seattle? Washington? From Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, he, he, rather, he got a chance to go there? I guarantee you he ain't no fool, because he like this. I'm in L.A. Even when I get paid, I know I can do some commercials or something. He's a good, good-looking guy, light skin. They're gonna, they gonna love him in LA. You get him Westwood, so they gonna offer him some money. Hey, he gonna go. Hey, I'm going over there. I'm telling you, <laughs> but you see it too, and you can see it kind of change. As it, it was kind of his team, but everybody understand it's Lonzo team. Y'all just filling in, which is cool. But it's Lonzo team, but y'all just you can do all the scoring you want. But Lonzo knows how to play with people who score the ball a lot. Because he, he did it with his brothers growing up. Melo was averaging 27, and Melo was averaging 30 something. You got to know how to get them guys going in the AAU and all that. So he knows how to play with two high power scores. But DeMar is getting a lot of the credit. And, and I, I think with, with, with Levine coming up, it's, it's, it's hard for him to kind of take a back seat and be the second fiddle. The team, you want to be number one. So I obviously uh, it's fun and you know we're being facetious when we talk about Lavar and you know say everything you will about him he did get three boys into the NBA they don't get in trouble and two of them are really really good and you know this is it's all fun and games but marvelous one I wanted to dissect a little bit of what he said and kind of bring it to reality so when you hear that that idea do you think exactly I mean, take away Lavar from the situation but let's what he said do you think it does ba- bother Zach? A, a true ice in his veins type of player that the team did become DeMar's team? Or do you think secretly that the guys all rally and still believe it is Zach's team? What did you think when you heard those comments? Mm-hmm. And, you know, now that you look back retroactively into the season. I mean, I don't think that, that it's anybody's team per se. I mean, yeah, obviously uh, in a perfect world, you want, you want everybody to have no eye on the word team, you know, but uh I don't know what's what's going on in the club in the you know in the in the, in the clubhouse, you know club clubhouse <laughs> behind the scenes. But uh, you know, he he had the father has a history of being a little bit outspoken, and uh, I don't know. I mean, I like his commercial with his other son though with AT and T. It's a pretty good one. <laughs> so I, you know, so I, obviously he has a rep enough to to be uh, to, you know to to get a commercial for himself. So. I mean, I wouldn't take a lot of stock in what the man says. I mean, you know, he, he probably gets some information from Lonzo from behind the scenes, but uh, I, I don't think that there's any, uh, you know, jealousy necessarily if that's the case and whose team it is. Uh, I, I don't see that that there's any kind of, you know, uh, fight over whose team it is. I mean, it could be either one of their. <laughs> hopefully they feel it's been both their teams, you know, so. Uh, yeah, but uh, this year, clearly, uh, you know, Levine was not the main man for much of the year because he was injured and out a lot. And uh, I think that all in all, that he, he you know, that, that he, that the Rosen had a better year. Uh, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that it's his team necessarily. So I, I would, I don't take much stock in what he said. Yeah, I, I think in general, you don't take too much stock when it comes to big picture, things like that. I think he does a good job of making sure that his name and his son's name stay in the headlines and that they are good enough of players to do it on their own. But it always you can use that little extra help to sell a couple more jerseys or T-shirts or shoes. But he did bring up some uh, in the rest of this interview. They did talk about 
what's going on with Lonzo and Lonzo's knees. He did say that Lonzo won't need another surgery, but that he will be rehabbing in California. Now, stepping away a little bit from the Zach Levine situation, because I think that's all just, you know, uh, LeVar being LeVar. But when he talks about his son's injury and all the talking that that is something a lot of people are worried about, the bone bruise, and that it might not necessarily be the surgery he had, but it's the recovery and how the inflammation has been up. Does that worry you some? Do you think he's going to play? LeVar did say in that same interview with David Kaplan that he should be ready for the start of the season. How important is it for Lonzo to be in the starting lineup, especially if he knows his role? Like we, LeVar says in that interview that Lonzo knows that he doesn't need to drop 30 points, but he needs to play perimeter defense. He needs to establish everybody else's game by giving them proper shot placement. So if he does that, that's a big thing you don't have that they didn't have in this playoffs. If Lonzo mm-hmm. was hurt to start the season, how will that affect next year's team? Yeah, well, I, I hope that his that the, the, the Lavar's statements early on back in 2017 hold true because he uh, made made headlines when he made a remark saying that his son Lonzo was better than Stephon Curry. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that and that he himself could defeat Michael Jordan one on one. Well, he was a football player, if I recall correctly, the dad. But in any event, so he's outrageous and not to be really believed. So in that respect, you know, we can leave him out of it. But in terms of, uh, I mean, it would definitely help the team to, to have to have Lonzo, particularly if if uh, Levine's gone. I mean, that, they'll need more scoring, obviously. So, you know, we talked about the fact that they, that there's a possibility of a max contract for Levine and maybe a, a trade, you know, which would make sense. You get something. But he's definitely, you see, you keep seeing in the headlines that there's all these teams that are interested in him. So maybe that's what's going to happen. But uh Again, it would be good to, you know, have uh, as many parts back next year as possible, you know, on this team because they were they definitely were lacking inside strength and, and, and three-point shooting in the playoffs for sure, and that's what hurt them. So we need to address that. Now, I kind of want to bring this back to reality after all this yeah. I'm never having. The idea is Arturis Karnaschovas and Mark Eversley don't have leaks. That's the one thing I think we've learned over the last few years of covering this team, doing this show here is they don't let you know what's going on. So yeah. any noise that's going on, anything that's trade rumors about him yeah. going, Zach Levine going to Portland or New Orleans or any, anything right. is coming from other sources and agents of other players. It yeah. is not coming from this front office, from this scouting team, at least from what we've seen right now. There are no leaks in the ship. So I, knowing that marvelous one, are, how intriguing is it that we probably don't have a clue on what they actually want to do? Yeah, well, I mean, you, you have to rely on Casey Johnson, you know. So, yeah. for, so uh, uh, I don't know, you know, the sourcing. And if, if there's no leaks, then the sourcing isn't very good because <laughs> it's all speculation. But uh, uh, I, I think it's good that, that, that it's kept sort of quiet. I mean, you know, look what happens when there's a Supreme Court leak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things turn out pretty bad. Yeah, it's yeah. I think which would you bring up though about leaks though and like kind of the the parallel of the universe is the idea of everybody being on the same page or at the very least that you're able to come up with a game plan. I think that's the one thing that a Bulls fans might have more of trust in that let's say society has in reality <laughs> is that idea of like at least the people in charge right now in this certain scenario seem to have an I uh, they're not over their uh, over their skis you know they don't they don't seem like they're drowning they may not right. be the the title contenders that you want so fast but I do yeah. think that they're doing what a current team that might be going to the NBA Finals in Miami has done and that mm-hmm. you have to build a culture and you have to eventually find your one superstar the Bulls had that guy except now he's their superstar develop <laughs> another one in Bam out of Bayou and be able to get free agents and get guys like Tyler Hero and and develop this culture and have a coach like like Spolstra. And then mm-hmm. obviously if from the top of Riley, like this is this is something you want to build. And that mm-hmm. does take time. And you're not going to win every single year. But your contenders, Miami has been one of the thorns in the Eastern Conference for a decade plus. And it did help that LeBron and the big three got there. But that was before that. Shaq helped that. But you needed Dwayne Wade to be drafted on that team. And I think that's what you want to see as a Bulls fan. Now, Marvelous, when you look around the league, this is a team that came from the Denver front office and the Philly front office and Toronto and and uh, all these different ties. Do you think that that kind of is the gold standard of the the modern day NBA is to try to be as close to the Miami Heat that any other organization? <laughs> I mean, you can you can build a number of ways, obviously. I mean, uh, 
it doesn't seem like the best way is to build through the draft currently. Best way is the is the build through free agency. It seems to me because it's kind of like in college right now. The way to build is through the transfer portal, <laughs> not with freshmen. So uh, I think that's the way it is. If you have some veteran players that can make you know make a make you a, a a much better team right away, that's the way to go. So that that's what I would <laughs> recommend, and I'm sure that's what they're thinking because that's kind of the way they went last year. They did you know obviously draft the Sumnu and the, and they and they got you know and and such. So they do have that piece, but the way to win now is through through free agency. You know, no question about it. And you know, there's a, quite a few excellent choices in that regard and i'd like to see them uh, do that because they definitely don't have enough pieces right now to be a champion we saw that against milwaukee i mean i guess other teams they might have not looked had their weaknesses exposed as much but they definitely were exposed against milwaukee i just was so amazed at how well they did in milwaukee because i never expected that the first two games but uh uh, reality hit, and they, you know, they really like. I, I think, I think I said Tom, <laughs> that you know they had, they had to have, you know, an excellent performance from everybody, and that uh, the Rosen would have to score fifty points, and he almost did. I think he's forty-one <laughs> or something. But it, they can't rely on him to do that every night, even though he was doing it every night for some time. So they do need, you know, like a a, a bad man and a Robin, like the you know Jordan Pippen days, or and they did kind of have that with Levine, but. I think that they need a you know a consistent three point shooter, and they need somebody that goes to the basket because they need to get to the foul line more because that was really unbelievable how infrequently they shot free throws in the playoffs. You know, before we kind of put to rest this uh, this part of the conversation, we'll know more as the weeks go on because we will eventually find a Western and Eastern Conference final champions. Yeah. And we will get an NBA Finals, and then the Bulls will be on the clock to make moves. We've just had the NBA draft lottery, so we know who the number one, two, and three teams are going to be in the draft order. Yeah. But marvelous one! Before we we move on to what's going on at Wrigley, just really quickly, is it surprising to you that there's been so many blowouts in the conference finals where the teams <laughs> seem to be evenly matched on paper? But these games just get out of hand so fast, and these teams are mm -hmm. so good that if they start just building these leads, it's hard to get back into mm -hmm. it. And yeah. e even in a world where a 20-point lead isn't a 20-point lead, like, there's yeah. still these crazy blows. And did that surprise you a little bit? Yeah, sure. Particularly Friday night, I mean, Don Sick went, went crazy. I mean, he, he had, at what did he have? Uh, at halftime, he, <laughs> he had an unbelievable number of points. I don't know if it was like 20 or 30-something, but whatever it was, I mean, they had a, they had they scored almost as many points in the half in game two as they had in the whole game one. Yeah. So it will be interesting to see what happens in Dallas on Sunday night as we speak. But uh, that will be key because Golden State, you know, obviously is hoping to get the home court back because it's one all. And uh, I mean, the blowouts is is amazing to me. And you'd think that it would be tightly contested all the way because uh, you know, but these teams, I mean, all of a sudden. With a three-point shot, you can you know string twelve or fifteen points together before you know it. With a Curry or even a Dancic, he he's just uh, remarkable. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm shocked when that happens. But it looked like either team could turn it on. I mean, I was watching the game Friday, and you know, I said Dallas is going to win this game. They're ahead by twenty some odd points. They scored seventy some odd points and a half, but then they got shut down. So you never. It's just amazing. You know, you think that the that the adjustments must have been pretty good at halftime because uh, <laughs> it was uh, it turned around completely and uh, Golden State won that game, which was key for them because they would have been really in bad shape going to Dallas. It goes to show how special players like the Rosen and Jimmy Butler are too, though, that they're doing right. what they do with mid-range games mm -hmm. and then how much of a freak Giannis and yeah. Embiid and Joker are, and then yeah. the level that Luka Doncic is. But while the games haven't been so competitive, it's still intriguing because it always has the potential of it. But most importantly, we want to know what you think. Let us know on Twitter at Sports Cubico TV. You put any stock in what LeVar has to say about Zach Levine. Do you personally believe Zach Levine is signing the max deal with Chicago? Will there be a sign and trade? What about the blowouts in the Eastern and Western Conference Finals? Is it going to sour your taste when we get an NBA Finals matchup? Let us know on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV.